From the start of your scuba diving journey, you are led to believe that decompression sickness is a pure failure of skill and should be feared or even shamed. In reality, from working with experts worldwide, I've learned that decompression sickness is something anyone can get even doing everything right. Today, I'm going to help dispel some of the myths and share hacks that will save your life while minimizing the risks of decompression sickness so that you can focus more on enjoying the thing we love most, diving. All right, let's start with something most people find confusing at first, but I promise once you understand it, you'll see diving in a whole new light. Imagine you've just opened a can of soda. You hear that satisfying fizz as bubbles start to form and rise at the surface. That's actually pretty similar to what happens in your body during a dive, but on a much slower scale. When you're underwater, breathing compressed air, your body absorbs nitrogen. It's like your tissues are tiny little sponges soaking up more and more nitrogen as you dive deeper and stay longer. This isn't harmful in and of itself, but here's where it gets tricky. As you ascend, the pressure around you decreases. Remember that can of soda? If you shake it up, and open it too quickly, you get a very messy explosion. Your body works the same way. If you ascend too fast, the nitrogen can form bubbles in your blood and tissue, potentially leading to what they call decompression sickness or what is traditionally called the bends. This is where safety stops come in. It is like slowly opening that shaken soda can, giving the nitrogen a chance to leave your body gradually. And the most important thing, safely. During a safety stop, you're allowing that time for this excess nitrogen to off-gas or release from your tissues without forming those dangerous bubbles. I remember my first dive in Australia at the SS Yongala. As we ascended, my dive buddy and I paused about 5 meters for a safety stop. As we paused there for some time, I could feel pressure and air escaping from my sinuses. I even noticed tiny bubbles forming on my skin. It was nitrogen leaving my body. It's incredible. That's when the importance of safety stops really hit home for me. This whole process of decompression is called off-gassing. But you might be wondering, if off-gassing is so important, why not just stay at a safety stop depth for longer or even forever? Aside from the gas running out issue, well, it's all about balance. Your body is constantly absorbing and releasing nitrogen throughout the dive. The goal of a safety stop is to tip that balance towards release, allowing more nitrogen to leave your body than what you're taking in. Understanding off-gassing is crucial because it helps you make better decisions underwater. When you know why you're doing a safety stop, you're more likely to do it properly every time. It's not just about following a rule, it's about actively participating in your own safety. And here's a pro tip. Even if your dive computer doesn't call for a safety stop, it's always a good idea to do one anyways. It's an extra layer of protection, especially if you've been diving close to your no decompression limits or challenging conditions. Remember, the effects of nitrogen absorption and off-gassing can be cumulative over multiple dives. That's why it's important to pay attention to your dive profiles and surface intervals, especially on multi-day dive trips. Now that we've got a solid understanding of off-gassing, we have to now explore how you can implement techniques to ensure you don't explode, like that soda can. Timing is everything. When it comes to these crucial pauses in your ascent, and I'm going to show you why. The most common and standard procedure for safety stop is pretty straightforward. You must pause at about five to six meters, and that's about 15 to 20 feet for three minutes, and that might not sound like much, but trust me, for those few minutes, can make all the difference and has been the benchmark of time that most practice for safety. Why this specific depth and duration? Well, it's all about striking the perfect balance. At five to six meters or 15 to 20 feet, the pressure is low enough to allow nitrogen to leave your tissues at a good rate, but not so low that bubbles start forming quickly. As for the time, three minutes is the absolute minimum you should aim for but five minutes give you a little bit extra safety buffer. Now, you might be wondering why safety stops are especially important for dives deeper than 10 meters. 
The answer is simple. The deeper you go, the more nitrogen your body absorbs. More nitrogen means you need more time to off-gas safely. It's like letting a bigger balloon deflate. It will take a little bit longer time. I've seen divers get complacent about managing their own decompression times, thinking, oh, the dive master will signal when it's time to go up, but what if theirs distracted? What if their timing is off? What if your depth was deeper than theirs? This brings me to a vital point. Always time your own safety stops and your own depth. Don't rely solely on your dive guide or buddy. Use your dive computer or watch to keep track. It's your safety on the line after all. Think of it as bringing your own underwater timekeeper. Another recreational scent profile that I've come to learn and have come to prefer, but is not as common as the three minute safety stop, is the ascent profile where you ascend quickly at 10 meters or 30 feet per minute to half of your depth. Then from there, ascend at a much slower rate every three meters or 10 feet at 30 seconds ascending and a 30 second holding. What this looks like from 100 feet is quickly raising to 50 feet at 30 feet per minute. Then raising 10 feet every minute until you surface with intervals of 30 second hold and a 30 second ascent. This profile is less common than the three minute safety stop, but is said to be safer as it decompresses slower as you ascend to the surface and it helps you practice strong buoyancy control along the way. But here's the thing, mastering your safety stop timing isn't just about following the rules. It's about developing an intuitive understanding of your body's needs underwater. The more you practice, the more natural it becomes. Eventually, you'll find yourself automatically pausing at your decompression marks and assuming the stable and gentle hover position. Your body and mind in sync with the underwater world. Now that we've covered the importance of timing, let's explore the most fundamental building block to all your dive skills as a scuba diver. This is the holy grail of skills in diving. It's the sweet spot for where you're neither sinking nor floating upwards. You're just suspended in the water, almost if gravity doesn't exist. During a safety stop, maintaining and pinning your depth naturally is crucial. It allows you to stay at the correct depth without constantly fighting to stay in position. This is called neutral buoyancy, and you want to keep practicing to hold this hover state until you can multitask on something while maintaining neutral buoyancy within one meter or three feet of your target depth. I remember my first attempts at achieving neutral buoyancy during safety stops. I felt like a yo-yo, bouncing up and down, never quite finding that perfect balance. On top of that, sometimes you get a swell and surge near the surface that make it even harder. But with practice and some key techniques, I eventually got the hang of it. And trust me, once you start mastering this skill, your diving experience will transform. One of the most important techniques for maintaining neutral buoyancy during a safety stop is proper air management in your buoyancy control device or BCD. As you ascend, the air in your BCD expands due to decreasing pressure. If you don't vent this expanding air, you'll find yourself floating up uncontrollably, definitely not what you want during a safety stop, and it can be super dangerous. The key is to vent air from your BCD as you ascend. It's like letting air out of a balloon slowly and steadily. This adjustment keeps you neutrally buoyant as you rise. When you reach your safety stop depth, you should only need minimal adjustments to maintain your position. Now let's talk about body positioning. During safety stops, there's often a debate whether you should be vertical or horizontal. The truth is, you always want to stay in good trim, with fully flat and horizontal trim with your head back. This gives you the most resistance from ascending or descending outside your control as it is essentially forming a vertical break, similar to what skydivers would do to slow themselves when they jump out of a plane. It's that air diving, air break position, and it works the same in water. Further, great buoyancy and trim are skills that every diver must work to keep strong. The safety stop is a great time to practice hovering with little movement and keep these sharp. Instead of doing those neat little water rings, try practicing neutral buoyancy with those safety stops. It will make a world of difference. Let's talk about some tips for practicing buoyancy control in various conditions. First, 
Use visual references. If you have a DSMB, anchor, or any mooring line, it is a good to use the line as reference and safety for what might be above. If you start drifting up or down, you'll notice it quickly and can make adjustments. Another tip is to practice your breathing. Slow, deep breaths help stabilize your position in the water. Rapid or shallow breathing can cause you to bob up or down. But remember your lungs are like a natural BCD. They affect your buoyancy with every breath. If you're diving in current, try to position yourself so that your current hits your head. This makes it easier to swim against it and maintain your point of references at all times. One of my favorite exercises for improving buoyancy control is the hover challenge. Once you reach your safety stop depth, try to maintain your position without using your hands or fins. It's harder than this sounds, but it's a great way to fine tune your buoyancy control. Remember, mastering your buoyancy isn't just about looking cool underwater, although that is a nice bonus. It's more about safety. Good buoyancy control means you're less likely to accidentally ascend too quickly or descend below your safety stop depth. It also means you're using less energy, which translates to longer, more enjoyable dives. Now that we've mastered the art of buoyancy, let's take our safety stop skills to the next level. We're going to explore some advanced techniques that not only keep you safer underwater, but also make you look like a total pro to your dive buddies. Let's start with anchors and mooring lines. These can be incredibly helpful tools for maintaining your depth during safety stops, especially in areas with strong currents. Imagine you're doing a safety stop in Cozumel Channel, known for its powerful currents. Without an anchor line, you might be finding yourself drifting away from your boat faster than you can say, surface marker buoy. Using an anchor or mooring line gives you a fixed reference point. You can hold onto it lightly, allowing you to maintain your position without expending too much energy. This is particularly useful if you're feeling a bit fatigued after a long dive. However, it's important to remember that while these aids can be helpful, they're not without its risks. Always be mindful of your surroundings and avoid getting tangled in the line. Use your fingers like a V. If you're getting close to the line, you can put your fingers out and maneuver yourself to the line. Don't let that line get past you because it becomes an entanglement hazard. Now, let's talk about one of the most important pieces of safety equipment you can have the Delayed Surface Marker Buoy, or DSMB. You might have heard divers call these safety sausages. Due to their elongated shape when inflated, they resemble something. You can use your imagination. These simple yet effective tools are essential for signaling your position to boats on the surface. I remember a dive in Socorro where our group got separated due to a sudden change in current. As we ascended, each buddy pair deployed their SMB. From the surface, our dive boat could easily spot the bright orange markers bobbing in the waves, making it simple to pick us all up safely. Here's why DSMBs are so crucial. They enable all boat captains in the area to know that divers are underwater below and could surface at any moment. This is especially important in areas that are heavily trafficked with boat or have limited visibility. If any member of the dive team has deployed a DSMB to notify boats above, it's important to then crowd around the DSMB line, being careful not to be entangled in it, but keep it in sight and use it as a reference for ascending and performing the decompression safety stop. Remember, using a DSMB isn't just about signaling to boats. It also serves as a safety measure if you drift away from your intended ascent point during a safety stop. In essence, it acts as a lifeline to the surface world and your position no matter where it may go. Now, you might be wondering, do I really need to use a DSMB on every dive? The answer is, it depends on the conditions. If you're diving from shore or in a protected area with no boat traffic, you might not need one. But in open water or areas of currents, a DSMB can be a literal lifesaver. Not to mention, it's a perishable skill. I try to deploy it as often as I can for practice, and it often helps keeping together as a group as everyone crowds around the ascent line. 
I once heard a story from a dive instructor in Thailand. He was leading a group of divers. When they surfaced far from their boat due to an unexpected current. Without the SMBs, they might have been difficult to spot in the choppy sea. But thanks to their bright orange markers, the boat saw them from a distance easily. Alright, we've made it through our safety stop. And now it's time for the final leg of our journey, the ascent to the surface. This is where all your hard work pays off. But it's also a critical moment that requires your full attention. Let's talk about why a slow ascent is so crucial. You've also spent time at your safety stop allowing excess nitrogen to leave your body safely. But the process of off-gassing isn't over yet. In fact, it continues for hours after your dive. A slow ascent is like giving your body a gentle transition back to surface pressure, allowing it to adjust gradually and safely. The magic number to remember here is 30 feet or 9 meters per minute. That's the maximum recommended ascent rate. It might feel painfully slow, especially if you're excited to share your underwater adventures with your buddies on the boat. But trust me, this slow pace is your best friend when it comes to diving safely. Now let's just quickly review that a reason why the 5 meter or 15 foot part of the ascent is so important is the biggest pressure differential and the best area to off gas if you're not needing a deeper decompression stop. And that's why we always do a safety stop in that zone. As you rise from 5 meters to the surface, the ambient pressure halves. That's a big change for your body to handle, especially considering all the nitrogen present in your tissues. So how do you navigate this final stretch safely? First, slow down even more. I think of it as savoring those last moments underwater. Use visual references if you can. These can help you gauge your ascent rate more accurately. Staying calm and focused during this final ascent is key. Keep in good horizontal trim and posture. It's easy to get distracted by thoughts on the surface. I find it helpful to focus on my breathing during this final ascent. Slow, deep breaths can help you maintain a steady pace and keep you relaxed. It's also a good time to do a final equipment check especially if you're going to be getting on a boat. Is anything a snag wrist that might just rip something off and ruin your gear? It's a good time to check everything. One technique I find useful is to time my ascent using my dive computer or watch. Aim for about 30 seconds to cover the last 5 meters. It might feel like an eternity, but it's a small price to pay for your safety. It's important in the last 5 meters to not just think of your BCD as a nice elevator to the top. Usually you can just breathe in with your lungs, take a nice, not full breath, because you don't want to worry about lung expansion, but good breath in and you should start feeling yourself accelerate towards the top slowly. Don't fiddle with the BCD, or just pop to the top instantly. As you approach the surface, don't forget to look up and listen. Ensure you are right near the line if there is one available. Make sure there are no boats overhead and extend one hand above you to protect your head as you break the surface. Once you're up and inflate your BCD fully, give the OK sign to your boat or anyone that's sure that you're OK. We've covered a lot of ground from understanding off-gassing to mastering buoyancy and deploying SMBs. Safety stops are crucial for preventing decompression sickness and ensuring your overall dive safety. Remember, it's not just about following the rules, it's about understanding why they matter. Practice these techniques on every dive. Make them second nature. With time, you'll find yourself automatically pausing at that 5 meter mark, your body in sync with the underwater world. You're not just a diver anymore. You're a guardian of your own safety underwater, but you're still missing key pieces of scuba safety that you need to know next. Underwater communication with hand signals. Check that out here. And until next time.